Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This week we're going to have a quick look at a riff that lots and lots of people get wrong, and no, it's not Billie Jean by Michael Jackson, I know that's the one that everyone talks about. No, this is a rock classic that we all get wrong, especially when we play with fingers. I played this riff wrong for years and years and years, and it's only with the advent of YouTube that I got to discover how John Paul Jones really plays it. So yes, it's John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin, and I think you'll have guessed it by now, it's a whole lot of love. So the standard way that people usually play this riff is like this. So, you know, that sounds like a whole lot of love. You get that big Jimmy Page guitar riff coming in and then the bass kicks in and you can hear that big thudding underneath. So, that's how I played it for years and years and years. Until I saw this. And then I saw this. So you can see there that instead of this, we've actually got So the key to this riff is the pick. It's hard to really get the same tone and chords with the fingers. It's doable, but it's just not the same. So you want to use a pick for this. So I'll very quickly just run through the notes in there. There's only three notes. We've got the B, seventh fret of the E string, and then we move to the D at the fifth fret of the A string. But as well as the D there at the fifth fret, we're also playing the open D string. So we've got this little unison there. Kind of a chord, I suppose. Just playing the same notes on two strings. Okay, then we move to the final note, which is an E. So we've got the open E, which is how a lot of you might have played it in the past, but also we have the E there at the seventh fret of the A string. So we've got that big octave, which gives us that nice, big, you know, ballsy tone. So we've got. So there's only three notes in there, just B, D, B, D, E, 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 D, B, D, B, D, E, E, D, E, D, E, okay? So now let's break that down a little and look at the mechanics of what we're actually doing. So the riff's in two halves, really. We've got the first half, and then the second half. Okay, so for the first half, we, uh, we're playing a B, 7th fret of the E string, and I'm actually playing it with the uh, pinky there, the 4th finger, but you can play it with the 3rd finger, and I think that's how John Paul Jones generally plays it. So, we've got the B, and then we've got the D there, 5th fret of the A string, but I'm looping the finger over, so it's curled over, so I can catch that, uh, that open string as well. So I'm using the 1st finger there. So, now in terms of the pick, I'm playing a downstroke for that E string, for the B, and then an upstroke for for the D there. So, so downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke. So I'm upstroking on the uh, on the D where we're playing the open string and the fifth fret of the A string. Okay, so it just means we've got that alternate picking going on. So, and you can see there I'm actually palm muting, so I'm resting the heel of the hand there at the uh, at the bridge just for that chunky sound. But you don't don't have to. So that's the first half. Now the second half is a little more tricky because we've got this kind of rhythmic strumming action to deal with. So in terms of the notes we've just got that open E string and then we've got this seventh fret at the A string for that nice chunky octave. And you can use either the pinky or the ring finger to fret that note at the E string. It might change a little how you address the ghost notes in a minute but um, either way you'll just get used to it. So um, I use the the pinky most of the time, but like I said, John Paul Jones usually uses the third finger. So, what you first want to get used to is just that up and down action, okay, the strumming action. So just, if you, any of you have seen any of my other lessons, you'll know this is home position, so we just want to get into ghost notes. So just lay the hand lightly across the strings, dead weight, so we don't have any, uh, we don't have any actual notes in there, and I'm going to have the pinky or the ring finger, depending on how you're going to play that octave, I want that to be around that area, around that 7th fret there, so that we're ready to press it down when we need it, but to begin with, just get used to the ghost notes. So, there I am, 
in position and then just play the E and the A string, just strumming on them, alternate picking. So. Okay, so that's all I'm playing. And uh, try to accent on each beat. So we have one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... Okay, so that's the action. That's what you want to get used to before you put the notes in. Next, we'll play the E on each beat. So that's going to sound like this. Okay, so I'm just allowing the notes through. So I'm in this home position with the ghost notes, and I just bring the fingers up, apply pressure with that fourth finger or third finger, and then as soon as we've played it, we go back to our home position, back to the ghost notes. Start out really, really slow. see there these two fingers the uh, second and third fingers are raising up and if you're actually playing with the third finger you might have the thumb there to mute the E string instead in which case you have to obviously lift the uh, the thumb off so and then just build up speed and then you can hear that I'm starting to come through because the faster you get with it the more likely you are to play a whole lot of love okay so Next, we add the, uh, the final note of each uh, set of 16. So we've got one E and A, two E and A, three. So it's on the A of each. So one E and A, two E and A, three E and A, four E and A. And that's it. Okay, now one thing you might notice when you're listening to the isolated recording and as you're playing it is that you might get more of those, those octaves in there just because you're getting into the groove with it, you're just feeling it. You know, you might get you know, like three in a row. You know, however it comes out is fine. Just Okay, and then you just mix it with that first half. So. So, start out really slow with that riff and then just gradually build up speed. Make sure that you're nice and clean with it as you do. And uh, once you've got it up to speed, you can play along with the backing track. So, I've got a practice track here, just the drum beat. And uh, if you want to play along to this, just go on over to talkingbass.net, click the link in the info below. It's all there along with a rundown of the whole lesson, tab, all of that stuff. Okay? So, here it is with the track. So that's Whole Lot of Love by Led Zeppelin. I'll actually be doing a top five or top 10 or top whatever Led Zeppelin bass riffs very soon. So uh, keep an eye out for that. And please like this video and subscribe to keep up to uh, date with all the weekly releases. And for a free rundown of the lesson and the backing track, just go on over to talkingbass.net by following that link in the info below. And while you're there, check out the lesson map where you'll find hundreds of free bass lessons. Okay, I'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.